Hello everyone, good morning. It's Sunday morning. We give God praise and thanks for blessings in, a, in abundance um, for life, for, for his breath in our lungs, for provision and protection. And we just want to say thank you, Father, for, for this morning, for this opportunity, for your word, for your love, and for your peace, for you, God. We commit to you this day. We commit to you our lives. For you, God, we submit our lives and we bow before you. And we bless your name. We exalt your name. We honor you this morning for being the great God that you are, the merciful God that you are, the loving God that you are. Today and now is for you, God. And in this moment, we just ask that you have your way. And we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your presence, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Sissy Wynand is playing in the background. She's playing I Surrender All. Everything. All my worries, all my stress, all my doubt, all my fears and my pains, God, I surrender all. Blessed Savior, I surrender. Surrendering all, surrendering everything to, to God who, who died on the cross, a God who said, lay your burdens upon me, lay every weight upon me. And just the privilege of knowing that we can just let it go on him, that hand it over to him, take our hands off of him and surrender it all and find that peace that comes only from God. That's what I want to talk about today. In a way, we're in the book of Job, Job chapter 23. I want to focus um, my attention on verse 3 today, but let's just read for a bit. Job chapter 23, verse 1. Then Job spoke again. My complaint today is still a bitter one, and I try hard not to groan aloud. If only I knew where to find God, I would go to his throne and talk with him there. I would lay out my case and present my argument. Then I would listen to his reply and understand what he says to me. Would he merely argue with me in his greatness? No, he would give me a fair hearing. Fair and honest people can reason with him. So I would be acquitted by my judge. I go east, but he is not there. I go west, but I cannot find him. I do not see him in the north, for he is hidden. I turn to the south, but I cannot find him. But he knows where I am going. And when he has tested me like gold in a fire, he will pronounce me Let's look at verse 3 again for a moment. If only I knew where to find God, I would go to his throne and talk with him there. If only I knew where to find God. Have you ever felt like you cannot find God? Like you have lost connection with him? You're crying out to him and you're praying. You need him so desperately. Everything seems to be going wrong and, and you can't find him. And sometimes I find myself in that place and that space. I need him desperately and I can't seem to find him. And, and that is, that's what I want to talk about today. I cannot find God. What do we do when we cannot find God? Why does this happen to us? When I was a little girl growing up, there was this game that we, we loved to play because we had no technology, right? We had no phone. 
um, no computers, no Xbox, but we, we had each other. We played games outside or inside. And one of the games that I love was hide and seek, right? I, I, I loved hiding. I, I didn't like seeking because I, I found that when I, and I couldn't find people, I, I, I became frustrated. And, and because I have such poor sportsmanship, I would usually quit. You, you know, I get frustrated and, and tearful and sad and I would quit. And sometimes it, it is like that with God, right? When you can't find him, it frustrates you and it makes you so sad, all right? Um, we, we pray. Sometimes I find myself, when, I, when I'm in a, a mood like this and I'm praying, and I'm so, I'm, I'm so caught up in my problems and things and people that I, I find myself distracted. And sometimes I, I'm, I, began, I begin doing something else or thinking about something else, even when I have not even said amen, right? Job, in our text today, was a man who was described by God as a fearing God. He was upright. He was righteous. He loved the Lord. He did what was right. And we found that the enemy Satan came to God, and, and he wanted that testing to be poured out upon Job to prove that, that Job only loved God, Job only served God because God was blessing him and God was protecting him. And so God allowed the enemy to touch Job, um, his family, his, his flesh, but never his life. And Job in all of his distress, his pain and his agony over everything that he had lost, we find him among friends. In chapter 23, and, and he says this, Oh, how I wish I could find God. Have you ever been there? I've been there. I've said that. You, you, you feel distant. There's a disconnect. You cannot sense God, and you cannot see God. Don't get me wrong. You know that he is real. There's a reality that God is real, that God is sovereign, that God is still in control. But the intimacy with him is what we have lost. One of my favorite writers, A.W. Towser, he said this. When you cannot find God, guess who, who has moved? Because it's not, it's not God. God has not moved. God does not distance himself from us. But it is the things that happen in our lives that cause the disconnection, the loss of the intimacy that we had with God. It's pain. It's loss. It's discouragement. It is sin. All of those things contribute to the disconnect that we feel, the loss of the intimacy that we know that we can have with God, that we once had with God. And because we're spiritual beings and because he's our creator, we need that connection. We need that intimacy. When we lose it, it bogs us down and it frustrates us. It, it frustrates us. All right? And so I want to talk about today what happens. Now, um, a major thing most of the time, a lot of the time, is that we have too much going on. We are busy. And we become burdened with that busyness in trying to get everything that, that needs to be done, done. All right, we have to clean, we have to wash, we have to mop, we have to cook, we have the kids to look after. Sometimes we have our own homework because we are studying, we have the kids' homework. Those of, um, those of you who have um, spouses, you have that, you have friends, and you have your work, and we are busy. I'm reminded of the, Bible, of the story in the Bible. Um, the interaction between Jesus and Martha and Mary. Martha is, is always so busy. And in the, in the story, Martha is, is busy. She's cooking, she's cleaning because Jesus is coming and she wants everything to be ready for him, right? And as she's so busy doing all, all of this stuff to get ready for the master, for Jesus, she looks over and she sees Mary, her sister, sitting down at Jesus' feet. And it frustrates her. And it upsets her, rightfully so, I would think, right? And she goes to Jesus and she's complaining. Tell Mary, help me do some of the work. And Jesus says to her, Martha, Martha, you need to be more like Mary. Sit a while and be learn of me. Fellowship with me. Right? And we can be masters. We are so busy with everything. Everything has our attention quickly. And Jesus is saying, sit and be. 
avoid all the trappings of busyness because it will disconnect you from God. And how do we do that? Um, one of the things that we have to learn to do, and this is my struggle, learn to say no. Like look someone fully in their eyes and say no. No, I cannot do it. No, I don't have time. No, I have too much things to do. No, I don't want to. I don't want to join that club. No, I don't want to lead that group. No. Because I have too many things on my plate already. My answer is no. Let us learn to say no. Stop being so busy because busyness does not mean that you are important. It does not. You're wearing yourself out. And you're losing that connection and that intimacy with God because we are so busy. Learn to say no. That's a message for me. Learn to say no. The next thing that we have to do is that we have to disconnect ourselves at times. You know, sometimes when even when you're in a group and you're with your friends, every single one of them, they have their technology. Their, their fingers are, are doing this. You know, you, you're communicating with someone. You're, you're caught up in social media things, other people's lives, other people's businesses, and you can hardly focus on your own life, your family life, and that of your close friends and God. Disconnect yourself at times. Put technology down. Put things down. And sit a while and just be. Just be. Do, do nothing. Just sit down and invite the presence of God to be with you and to minister unto you. All right? And here's something else that we can do. Rest. Learn to rest. Just spend time sitting down relaxing. God said to his people, the children of Israel, he, he gave them a Sabbath day. Sabbath. Rest. Rest in me. Step away from work. Step away from business. Step away from things to do. And just rest. Just rest. And rest is something that, that we don't have time to do because we live in a busy world. We are always on the go. We have things to do. We have people to see. We have money to make. And we don't rest. And I want to challenge each of, each of us today to say no. Disconnect yourself from the busy world and rest. We have too much going on and we are burdened by our busyness and it disconnects us from God. Then, most importantly, we have to remember to plug back into the power source. Who is the power source? The power source is God. He gives us life. He gives us strength. His breath, his air, our life belongs to him. And without him, when we lose that disconnection, we lose everything. We lose that intimacy. We lose that relationship. Jesus says, I am the vine. How can we be separated from the vine? And when we are not plugged into that power source, our prayer life takes a serious hit. And when you're not in that communion with God, when you're not communicating with him, when you're not fellowshipping with him by praying with him, you lose intimacy. Like you want to talk to the person you love. You, you, you want to talk and you want to hear from the person who loves you the most. And we do that through prayer. Prayer is a discipline that we have to become so engaged in and we have to develop it. Develop your prayer life. Spend time in praying. Plug in to the source. Plug into God. Plug back into that intimacy with God and commit to it. Devote yourself to it. That's a word for me as well because, you know, we, we can pray for five minutes or less and, and think that it is enough. We wake up in the mind, oh God, I'm so late, I'm so busy, I love you, thank you for life. That is not enough, that's not intimacy, and that is not fellowship. And we have to begin to rededicate ourselves and our lives and commit to and dedicate ourselves to plugging back into our source, our God, our Lord, our master, our ruler, our everything through prayer. You know, sometimes we, we have favorite TV shows, right? There was a time when um, when Netflix was showing The Walking Dead. I was so engaged in it. I didn't even like people calling.
following me on my telephone because it was an interruption to something that I liked doing. I didn't want anyone to disconnect me from my TV show. Like whatever it is that has your attention and you don't want that disconnection or interruption, phone calls or kids or her husbands or wives or friends, anything, not even work or sleep. I, I could just stay up all night watching a, a show that I, that I love so much, right? I challenge you and I challenge myself. The same way you don't like interruptions when you're watching um, a favorite TV show or doing something that you like, it's the same way we must say to people, do not call me during this time because I am in communion, I am in communication, I am in relationship, I am spending this time with my God, my soul. That is something that we have to do. Put time apart. Put time apart. Give yourself that time. Dedicate it. Put it in your diary. Devote yourself to it. Where you plug yourself into God and you spend time there. You spend time with him. Talking with him. Listening to him. Restoring. Restoring yourself. Becoming whole in him. Becoming strengthened in him. All right? It is important. And I want to challenge each and every one of us to plug back into our thoughts. God is not distant. God has not separated himself from us. And so when you cannot find God, and when I cannot find God, we must stop and ask ourselves, what is happening here? What has caused and have nothing to do with God. He has not left us. He has not separated himself from us. We have done something or we have allowed something to cause that disconnect, that loss in our lives. And so I remind us today, don't be so burdened by your busyness. Learn to say no. Disconnect yourself. Rest with him. And more than anything, Plug yourself back into the source. Grace God who gives us strength and who gives us that peace. And so may we surrender it all to God and reclaim that intimacy that we have with our Father. And when Job says again, oh, how I wish that I could find God. If I only knew where to find him, he knew. And all he needed was to just rest. And God came. God came to him and gave him restoration. And when we rest and plug back into God, he will come. And he will give us the restoration that we so need. All to Jesus. I surrender all to him. I freely give. May God bless you your family, your household. May God keep you safe. May God strengthen you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless each and every one of you. Have a wonderful day and have an amazing week and expect God to do great things.